Hello guys, how's it going? So, this video, in fact, should I say, we are actually getting very, very close to the release of set 4. I've got my initial order in, so it's only going to be a couple of weeks now until we see the um, the release and the upload of set 4 onto Untap and the Game Crafter. Um, and in this video, we're going to be going through one of the three main um, types of units where you can have in play, archetypes as such. And we're going to be returning the human um, race to the to the game. So for those of you that haven't already seen, if you go a couple of videos back, you will see that there's some law to set for. And um, basically what happens is the set for is initially based after set three, when basically all hope is lost for the for the humans and, and the human race and all the other um species and stuff like that who are out there so the fairy and the nymph type units set up a portal to go back to the time before set one before uh Rainus, um and alto and stuff like that to try and rectify it for the greater good for themselves so with that portal being open um that kind of conflict with what's going to happen and the characters what i'm going to show you right now so before we get into the commons and the uncommons and the collaboration uh, units um, and the action cards, well, I'm actually going to do this the other way around and I'm going to reveal the power cards first, the main characters in set 4 for the human race at least. Um, we will have some familiar names, I'm sure you will recognise um, the first couple what we throw on, on screen here. Um, and one thing to try and clear up, which might confuse a bit of confusion, is one of the Mage Sisters, who actually comes from, even though the story is set in to set one, a lot of the characters are going to be from set one, apart from like the, the nymph units, um, one human in particular is going to be from that post uh, set three era, which is going to be Ulsa. Now Ulsa is one of the Mage Sisters, um, so if you know Iris and Kira and... and all oh, that like. Uh, also has never actually had a reappearance since set one. So she will be um, making a repair, reappearance for once. And she stumbles across this portal which is just about to close. The, what, the portal which is um, after set three. Uh, and she gets pulled into the portal and teleported back to a time before also in set one. So we need to remember that also is the post also and not the pre also. Um, so with that out of the way, let's begin with the characters, the main human characters coming in set 4. So if you haven't already seen, this is Ulsa. Um, as you can tell by the name, she's misplaced from time. Um, four green units, there's going to be a high influence on green and blue in this set um, because it's it never really got to see much in set 1 and that. Um, and she is a 500-600 unit. She's got a red ability which says basically once per turn on your main phase you can draw a card. If that card is not an info or butterfly unit then you lose 400 HP. Otherwise put it into play if possible. Um, that means you can play the unit without paying its cost. It solely comes from Ulsa's um, ability. Obviously if possible means if you've got a terrain space to place it upon. Uh, ignoring 1 and 2, a 3 and a 4 will recover HP to your core. A 5, you and infant butterfly units gain 100 HP. And a 6, for each butterfly in play, draw a card. For each nymph in play, recover 100 HP to your core. So obviously, as you can see, she is going to go into a new style of deck with the new archetypes for set 4. Obviously, a major support, which you would be rocking. <laughs> you should be rocking two of these in your deck if you decide to make a human, uh, like a human-y, nymphy, butterfly-y type deck. Now don't forget she is the post character um, for her. <laughs> so now we're going to be travelling back in time. We are going to be seeing, of course, Rainus will be, um, I'd like to say returning, <laughs> but it is going to be him before set one. And before he's actually a king, he is the prince. And the story basically is before, or should I say, as those two get married. So... We've got Rhaenys. Rhaenys has always been a royalty rare figure for the game. He has been across to many other different HTCGs before uh, and he's always been a bit of a, a power card to have, especially in a human deck. 
Um, in this instance, he's rocking the blue and the black colours. Um, card 1 with an attack and HP of 600 each. Uh, and whenever he attacks, uh, special ability, roll a die, if evens, this unit gains 200 attack this, power, uh, this battle. So he can become 800 attack power for, the, for, for, a, for a cost of 4 elements, which is pretty damn meaty if you ask me. Uh, 3, not only does he hit, but he, he allows you to draw a card, so you've got a nice bit of uh, card draw in there. Uh, a 4, your opponents can't use battle spells this battle, so uh, that will prevent your, especially if you're attacking, that will prevent your opponents from using battle cards, which can um, usually get the jump on you. Uh, 5, the unit gains 200 HP, so if you manage to roll an even, and a 5, he becomes 800-800, which is probably the biggest um, stats I've seen for a 4 cost card in the game. And then 6, very similar to his set 1 ability, destroy a unit with a play cost of 2 or less. That can be any unit, it could even be yours if you want, as long as it's got a cost of 2 or less, uh, it, it, it will be sent straight to the uh, discard pile. Now, we've got Rainus and his future queen, his wife, which... We are now going to release, uh, or reveal should we say, is Tiana, the princess. So again, she is a royalty rare character. A little bit harder to cast, uh, blue, red in free green. Probably the hardest unit to play in set 4. Um, she's got slightly better stats, a 600 attack, 700 HP. Um, but her main ability is what makes her her. Uh, so, as soon as she enters play, look at the top 4 cards of your deck. Put 2 into your hand, and the rest uh, back and then you reshuffle your deck. So you basically get to, in terms of magic, scry 4 and then draw 2. Now on a 1, not only does she miss but she also draws a card. So just for missing you're still getting a bit of a card draw. Uh, 2 is recover 200 HP to your core. 3 is 200 damage to all enemy units in play. 4, deal 500 damage to any one unit in play. 5, retract Retract any one unit from battle this turn. That's a major one because retracting a unit from battle um, basically nullifies the attack what it contributes to the, uh, to the damage pool. And obviously you can still damage that unit um, even though it didn't roll its die. And then a six is draw five cards. Obviously you want to be rolling a six in this. Uh, so that is um, Rainus and Tiana, the two main human characters for set four. Um, obviously, they get married and then something happens. If you look up the law for set one, that's kind of where set one begins and the creation of Alto um, starts. So the story to set four is that the nymphs and the, well, most of the nymph units try to come back to set one and prevent this from happening. They try to take out Tiana. Um, then we've got the first child of these two which uh, she has actually made an appearance in all three sets previously uh, and it's the younger version of herself uh, it's like a teenage version of her which is Kira uh, for two red she's a 400-300 unit uh, three, three, three to a five the unit gains 100 HP making her 4-4 four, four. and then if you roll a six your units gain 100 attack and HP this battle obviously you want to get that six roll as you do with pretty much any unit in the game um, Again, she's kind of like a an offensive, a little bit of support in her as well. But for two red uh, elements, you really can't have this not in a red deck. Uh, so that's Kira. And then following up from Kira, uh, obviously we've got Ulsa, but this is the future Ulsa. Now that's the main characters out of the way. We've got a dad, we've got a mum, we've got a daughter, a teenage daughter, and then we've got a daughter from the future. <laughs> So we've got all these different manners of characters, all rocking different colours, um, as you can see on screen. Uh, and I love the artwork, I especially love the artwork and the detail that's gone into Kira as well. Um, definitely one character's worthy of uh, rare and royalty rare status. So that's the main characters out of the way. With also she has her own action card. Usually there's one or two action cards which go from the from certain characters, which is paradoxical moments. A royalty rare action card, um, pretty easy to play even though it's quite expensive. This is based on the moment where Ulsa uh, encounters the portal or the, the time portal. Um, and she this is, this is the moment where she gets pulled through the portal into the past. So 
Look at the top 10 cards of your deck, divide them into two piles, allow your opponent to choose one and put the put in your consume pile. Then you can play the remaining cards for free without playing their without playing their cost. So a very very powerful royalty rare. So imagine you pull into um, a crystal golem or something like that. <laughs> a very powerful card. So that's your main characters and the main action card for the humans. We do also have a couple of other ads and sods before we close up on this video. Um, let's see if we can get them. So we've got a couple of common units. We've got Shadow Blade Warrior, uh, a half cost unit, 2-2. Two, two. Shadow Blade Defender, 2 cost. Um, whenever it defends, the units adjacent to it gain 100 HP. Uh, Shadow Shielder, 3 uh, cost, 3-5 uh, units. Shadow Agent, 4-4 uh, four, four unit for 3 cost. Shadow Charger, um, link ability, so whenever there's two of them, whenever you control two of these units, they each gain 200 attack power, which makes them 700 attack power each. Uh, that's the units. We have got a couple of um, battle cards and weapons. So we have got medical uh, medical wounds for two white. If a unit of yours would die in this battle phase, instead leave it in play with just 100 HP. This effect only happens once. Um, so that kind of puts that little um, that little umbrella over one of your units, which what would die during battle, and it kind of prevents them from um, getting killed off, basically. Uh, then we've got a copy of Forewarning. Um, it's actually quite easy to play. Just <laughs> there's a lot of colours in there, but um, it's actually relatively easy to play. You may add and or remove any number of units that you have in play to or from battle. So it might sound a bit funny, but basically you can you can kind of trick your opponent into thinking you're going to attack with a couple of units, not all of them. See what they defend with, and then if needs be, you can add or remove more units, whether that choice of um, declaring attackers is for the better or for the worst. So um, you can you can add or remove units from battle with, with forewarning. Uh, and then finally we've got Forbidden Sword, which is a royalty rare weapon. We've not had one of these for a while. Relatively easy to cast. This can only be equipped to a unit with a base attack of 500 or more. If the unit attacks and the enemy core takes damage in the same phase, your opponent must discard the top 5 cards of their deck. Um, so, um, running through, a lot of these units should have um, at least 500 attack. So Rainus, Tiana, Ulsa. And then a couple, not all, but a couple of the common units as well. Um, so the age, uh, the charger, can also use that weapon. Um, perhaps that would be a popular choice. I'm not too sure. <laughs> uh, and then finally, we've got the collaboration units, the uh, collaboration humans. We've got five of these. I'm sure you guys have seen these before. We have got Timeless Knight, uh, Wildfire Spartan from Realm Guard, Dark Knight from Bit Battle TCG. Morgana from Aether Games, uh, Astronomica, and finally Regis the Dimension Breaker, which is the royalty rare collaboration uh, art piece. So, I've tried to cram as much as I could into one video as possible. Hopefully I've not confused you guys too, uh, too much, but this is kind of, um, well, this is the, the video revealing the human units for set four, and then in one of the next videos we're going to be revealing the nymph and or the butterfly units, depending how how I get the videos uploaded onto YouTube. But uh, let me know what you guys think. Which was your favorite character? Did you prefer their skills or their abilities? Or did you prefer the artwork uh, and the colors, detailing or anything like that? If you could try and design some kind of combos with previous cards or deck ideas or something like that, uh, just be sure to let me know in the comments down below, guys. It's, uh, it is very, very uh, appreciated when you guys comment in the uh, you know down below in the videos it's it's really nice to have uh, the people talking about the cards and stuff um, and obviously um, while while this set is on order there will be some sneaky reveals towards the second project which I'm working on as well um, so yeah guys uh, let me know what you think and uh, thanks very much for watching and I shall hopefully see you in the next video I'll see you guys next week <laughs> see you later